Hi, welcome to this video lecture. Today we're going to be talking about machine learning with Python and sklearn. As kind of a follow-up to the other videos I've been doing on ordinary least squares and then some of the regularization methods, I wanted to cover this other very important topic that I sort of glossed over before, and this is uh, feature importance and scaling. So I want to revisit this example from the introductory video. If, if our objective is to build a sh machine learning model of this form, this is the linear version of it, we want to predict our future car velocity based on known inputs. Again, we've covered how do you make this model have nonlinear features where you take your input and you can do some uh, algebraic manipulations of those inputs before you do the machine learning. That's still totally in play. Um, but I wanted to just give kind of this hypothetical example. If we had a data set with uh, road tests from various different cars and we wanted to try and figure out we wanted to build a predictive model to try and predict the car velocity based on some other measured uh, inputs like throttle position, wind speed, the slope of the road, the weight of the car, or the number of stripes. Uh, we might, so what we would do is we would collect all of these different input variables, try and fit a model to uh, predict the car velocity with training data, then we could apply our testing data or a random sample of the same data set that was not included in training to see the predictive value of our model. Uh, so we would have these different uh, inputs and then we could transform those into various features. You may just keep the input itself as a linear feature or you could uh, transform that input to create a nonlinear feature. So one thing that I wanted to talk about in this specific case study is in before, we've looked at the magnitude of these coefficients, and we've talked about the magnitude of each of these coefficients tells you something about the importance of the accompanying feature, and that is still very true. With the data that we've been using in our uh, Python coding example videos, our inputs are all roughly on the same order of magnitude, but you can encounter issues where when your inputs are not on the same order of magnitude. For instance, in this hypothetical data set, the weight of the car, I think that's going to be a pretty important feature. That's going to be telling uh, as to, um, as this is certainly going to be very impactful on the car velocity. If you're driving a small car with a large engine um, and you push the throttle down, that's going to go much faster, accelerate much more quickly um, than a large truck, for example. So this is definitely an important feature, but notice the sort of the units that we're using here, where this is in pounds, and this puts our inputs at a different order of magnitude than the other uh, inputs. So what that's going to do, so throttle position is also going to be an important feature. This is just how much you're pushing down the gas, um, which certainly is important in determining how fast your car is going. So just think about this hypothetically. Uh, the what this is going to do to your model is you have a very large magnitude uh, in terms of your input and this is kind of an arbitrary as to what units you're using. So what that is going to do because the magnitude of the feature is so large that is going to make its coefficient relatively small. So I want to caution about doing these graphs, we've produced these bar graphs with the uh, using the coefficient as the feature importance. I think we're safe to have a kind of a quick and dirty model like we have been doing, um, but I want to caution that there is another step that you need to deal with this discrepancy in magnitude of your different variables. So I'm going to show you how to deal with it. So what you would want to do is you would want to scale each of your input variables, and this is quite easy to do. I'm going to pull up our, our example from doing ridge regression. When we did ridge regression, we imported this sklearn preprocessing toolbox. We're going to want to import this sub toolbox called scale here, and we're going to want to use this to scale our data. So I'll go ahead and run this guy. I'll read in the machine learning data. This is the same data I've been using in all the other examples, and it's also, you can find a link to this data set in the video description. Let's take another quick glance for the purposes of this video at this data set. So we see that why our our uh, output is ranging from 0 up to a little over 250. x1 ranges from 0 to 10. Uh, x2 ranges from minus 15 to 15. 
x3 ranges from 0 to 10. So again, our raw inputs are on the, about the same order of magnitude, but then we also do things like apply nonlinear transformations to these before we input them as features. So um, we are going to go through these same steps, just allocating all these different variables, x1, x2, and x3, into an x matrix of inputs. Um, we're going to define a second degree polynomial, um, do all the same uh, pre-processing things that we did before. However, I'm going to now use this scale function that I've just imported. I'm just going to scale my x data um, down the column axis, and I'm going to scale my y data down the column axis as well. So I run that. I get the same feature names that I've gotten from this polynomial features. So now I've transformed my features to include potential for nonlinear relationships. So after I've done that, um, I will have inputs or features that are a varying orders of varying orders. I think these are still roughly on the same order of magnitude. Um, but now I'm going to just show you when I plot all these on the same scatter plot. What this scale command does is it it resets our data so it has a it removes the mean so we have a mean of zero. And then it scales our data so that in each column we would have a, uh, a variance and a standard deviation of 1. So it puts all of our data on the same kind of a scale. And so now you can see when I plot y versus some of our different inputs. So here we're looking at um, this is the x1 input, this is the x2 input. I'm plotting this x9, which is our x3 squared, just to give you a sense of how the scaling works. So now you can see that all of our features are now on the same, roughly the same order of magnitude with a, a mean of zero and a variance and standard deviation of one. And we've also done this for our Y data. So this is important so that you can put all of your features on the same playing field. So this arbitrary choice of units and the also the relative magnitude of the numbers in your data set don't have quite a, as as much of an impact on the feature importance. So I'll go through uh, go through this again, dividing testing and training data, fitting our model. Again, this is just the ridge regression model. We still get pretty high R squared values in this case. I'll do our parity plot. So that's still looking good. Um, and now I'll do this bar plot. So now you can see we've sort of removed bias just rel regarding the overall magnitude of the numbers in our data set. And now we can still go in and pick out, okay, this x1 feature looks pretty important. This x2 squared feature looks very important. This x2 times x3 feature looks important. Uh, x3 is also perhaps important, and x3 squared is also important. This is another comment that I wanted to make. When we're looking at the magnitude of our coefficients for to judge their feature importance, uh, negative, we're, we're really looking at the absolute value here. So a large negative number is also important. It just means that there is a negative correlation there. So if I go back to our, our, our data here, so let's, some of these correlations might be negative, but still very important. So the weight of the car, we would expect that to be inversely correlated with the car velocity. Basically, the heavier the car at the same throttle position and the same other conditions, means that uh, we expect this to be a, a negative correlation. So heavier the car means the slower the car. Throttle position, the more you push on the gas, of course, the faster you think the car is going to go. So we would expect this to be a positive correlation. So still both are important. So both are important. Uh, wind speed is actually a tricky one because we don't have data on wind direction and if that's helping us or hurting us. So we don't, really don't know there. And we might need, this feature may just produce a bunch of noise um, without being accompanied by the direction of the wind and the direction of the car. So that may be something that ends up being statistically um, insignificant in this current data set. The slope of the road, I would expect this to have a negative correlation. If you're, if you're going up a steeper road at the same weight of the vehicle, at the same throttle position, I'd expect that to negatively impact your car. The number of stripes, I, we would expect just by uh, physical intuition, would expect this to have zero impact or for this to basically be an unimportant feature. So we've talked about to really judge the feature importance, you want to put all your features on the same scale, on the same playing field. Um, I'll also note that because you've scaled your inputs and your output, 
to glean useful information, useful predictive information, you need to unscale those at the end. And so that's the main reason why I glossed over those before. That was because our our input data was all kind of on the same order of magnitude, and then I wanted to make sure we got to a model that we could use for prediction right away. But just be mindful, if you've scaled all your data to do the fitting, which is a great practice that you should do in most cases, you would also need to unscale, just undo the same scaling mathematical operation that you did before you, uh, before you started the machine learning operation. Thank you.